Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening, depending on your time zone and depending on when you are watching this. I'm James Innes, and this is my YouTube show, The Jobs Guru. It is Tuesday, the 30th of June, 2020, the last year of the month, but my first show this week. I'm delighted to see you all here for today's episode. I extend a very warm welcome to all those who have subscribed since the last episode. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then please do think about subscribing so that you don't miss out on the next episode. My three shows this week are all going to have a common theme, equality, discrimination, diversity, division, human rights. Were we not all created equal? And I'll be starting today with racial discrimination. If you have any questions or comments as you watch them, do please type them into that comment section below. If you like what you see, then do please hit it with the YouTube thumbs up. Racial discrimination. Could I have picked a more dangerous topic to tackle, at least a more controversial topic? It's a minefield. Evidently, I'm white. And whilst I certainly didn't grow up in an exclusively white environment, by any means, it was nonetheless 95% white. In fact, it wasn't really until I was 19 and had moved to London for work, to Hackney to be precise, that I was really exposed in any quantity to people who weren't white. In fact, back then, the early to mid 90s, I was actually in a minority as a white person living in Dalston. And quite the eye opener it was, I can tell you. So whilst I might have ended up with a lot more experience with other races than the average privately educated heading towards middle-aged Brit, um, I am most definitely not an expert when it comes to race relations. No, I'm a recruitment expert, I'm an employment expert. Um, and I, I do know a thing or two about racial discrimination in that context. Racial discrimination goes far beyond matters of employment, of course, but in many ways, the same principles apply really. And I think the same principles largely apply to the topics I should be tackling in this show tomorrow and indeed Thursday as I pursue this theme of, of equality, discrimination, diversity, division. I'm going to come back to that question I, I posed earlier. Were we not all created equal? Well, we could argue about that until the cow, cows come home. I personally think we weren't all created equal per se. I think I'm very lucky to have been born in the countryside in the southeast of England rather than, say, a slum in Brazil. But conversely, my little brother was not particularly lucky to be born mentally disabled. No. So when we talk about being created equal, I think what we're really talking about is having equal human rights. So a child born into a, a slum in Brazil should have equal rights to a child born into relative luxury in the United Kingdom, and indeed a, a mentally disabled child or, or adult also has rights and should have equal rights. Should. I'm not saying they do. It's the United States uh, Declaration of Independence, uh, paragraph two, which says all men are created equal. And we'll just leave aside um, the, the possible sexism in that phrase for tomorrow's show, I think. Or, well, no, no, let's, let's, let's tackle it head on now. All men, all men are created equal. To me, it's quite clear that by all men, they, they intended to mean all of humanity. And any claims that they actually deliberately wanted to exclude women and children, and believe it or not, there are such claims. I think, you know, they're tosh and nonsense. But yes, in the phrase, the year 2020, that phrase, all, all men, has, shall we say, dated somewhat. Anyway, that phrase is immediately followed by the words that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And indeed, it is preceded by the phrase, we hold these truths to be self-evident. Of course, within the context of today's discussion, I should point out that this document was drawn up in 1776. And it wasn't until nearly a hundred years later, in 1865, that the US abolished slavery. So it clearly wasn't self-evident to uh, people back then that slaves were created equal with unalienable, uh, unalienable rights, such as liberty. What was it? You try saying it. Unalienable. It's not easy. Uh, just as an aside, the French, um, they actually abolished slavery in 1794, just 18 years after American independence. But they did then bring it back in 1802, and it wasn't until 1848 that they finally abolished it completely. Still, 17 years ahead of the Americans, I suppose. And the British, for their part, beat both America and France, abolishing slavery in 1807. But I digress, this isn't a history lesson. So, fortunately, we have come a long way since those days, haven't we? Evidently, though, not far enough. Just look at recent events, the, the Black Lives Matter movement. Just look at the momentum it has gained. 
A part of me is almost fearful of mentioning it even. I saw a video clip the other day where some businesses have been lambasted for appropriating the protests and jumping on a, the PR bandwagon whilst not doing enough on diversity within their own companies. Um, one individual said, stop using our pain to attract black consumers. You know, and I thought as much myself, seeing some of the posts being put out on social media by some businesses, some brands, many genuinely want to show their support, but for some, it does look like, you know, just another PR exercise. Um, what are the stats within their company? Now, I'm quite proud of ours at James and Dot Group. We, you know, we most certainly don't discriminate against anyone on any grounds whatsoever. It's something I just would never tolerate. We haven't actually put out any BLM posts, no, but I can tell you that over 30% of our staff worldwide are in fact BAME, Black, Asian and Minority Ethnic, which is decidedly above average for the populations concerned. But you know, even that acronym, BAME, is controversial. As I said, this really is a minefield. There are so many differences of opinion. There's a few basic facts, and then there's a whole shed load of prejudice and bigotry. So to get back to the employment side of things, the law, uh, in the UK, it's fairly clear. There's the Equality Act of 2010 that protects people against discrimination, harassment, and victimization in employment based on what are called protected characteristics. There are nine of them in total, and they include race. The point is that when it comes to recruitment, it should all be about your ability to do the job, and your skin color makes no difference to those abilities. Yes, I suppose some would argue that our differences may be a little more than just skin deep, but only a very little more, and that's only really apparent when we look at extremes. There aren't, yes, okay, many white athletes with, a, uh, white athletes with Olympic medals for the 100 meter dash, are there? But then again, there aren't many jobs where, you know, Olympic level sprinting features in the job description. But despite the measures that we have put in place, racism and racial discrimination do, of course, remain rife. So where do we go from here? front cover of Time magazine the other day called uh, recent events The Overdue Awakening. An article in the National Geographic, on the other hand, headlined with, are recent changes just window dressing or the road to change? I can't tell you. I can tell you what I hope, but I really have no idea. When it comes to mankind, one really never ceases to be surprised. You could just say, fingers and toes crossed and, and watch this space. But that doesn't really cut the mustard, as far as I'm concerned. No, I think we're all collectively responsible for ensuring that humanity ultimately achieves the right outcome. We all have our part to play. Yes, politicians, business leaders, pop stars, uh, etc. They might have more influence, but eliminating discrimination and division and protecting human rights for all is something for which each and every one of us has a degree of responsibility. It's our duty, not least with respect to future generations. So, not for now, from the end of today's show. I'll be back tomorrow, Wednesday. Remember, this show is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, each and pretty much every week. Just two more things. First, I'm going to squeeze in some routine, but important request. Do please check me out on social media um, and connect, follow, or otherwise stalk me, but please don't troll me. Life is too short for trolls. If you have any questions uh, or comments about this episode, about the show in general, indeed about life, the universe, uh, the Russian blue cat and its hypoallergenic coat, whatever, do please let me have them below. If you like this episode, then do please hit it with the YouTube thumbs up. If you've kindly given me a thumbs up, already, do think about both subscribing and also ringing that bell so you don't miss out on the next episode. And if you've already done all that, well, thank you very much. Finally, what's happening in the next episode? Well, tomorrow, I'm going to be continuing with the theme I've got for this week, equality. And this time, I'll be tackling gender equality, including the concept of, of equal pay, and also the gender pay gap. I do hope you'll tune in. Thank you for watching today. Keep safe and be well, my friends. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.